So recently one of my subscriber got a chance to attend a Wipro interview. His name is Arvind. So Arvind Bala attended an interview recently. He shared all the questions with us. He has around 4.3 years of experience. So I will go through each question one by one and explain them in a simple way with answers as well. So if you also faced any interview recently, please share your questions with us. There's a form available in the description. You can fill out that form and share your questions with us. All right, so let's start the video. So the interview started with the core Java question. The question was, what exactly happens in memory when you create an object in Java? Now with this question, interviewer want to understand like, do you really understand about the JVM memory object creation, the memories inside JVMs, how garbage collector works? And to answer this question, you can say something like when we write a new keyword, JVM allocates memory for the object in the heap area. It also initializes the instance variable with default values. Then the constructor runs and set custom values. A reference to this object gets stored in the stack area. If the object is no longer reachable, garbage collector cleans it later. So stack holds references, heap holds actual objects. Then there was a Spring Boot question, which was what is the role of the application context in Spring Boot? So if we talk about the application context, application context is the core container of it creates and manages all the bean in application. It also handles dependency injection automatically. It reads the configuration, scan packages and initialize beans at startup. So whenever we need a bean, application context provides basically the brain of Spring Boot application. Next, this requirement was for cloud. So that's why the interviewer shifted to a cloud question, which is uh, in AWS, how do you decide when to use S3 and when to use EFS? Now, if you are also mentioning cloud technology, then this question will be very helpful for you. If you have experience in any other cloud technologies like Google Cloud or any other instead of AWS, you can skip this question. But nonetheless, I will tell you how to answer this question. So you can start your answer like this. I use S3 for object storage. Like I can store files, logs or backup in S3 storage. It's cheap and highly scalable. EFS is shared file system and it needs multiple EC2 instances as well. If the application need to read write files like a normal Linux folder, EFS fits better. For images and large dub file, S3 is a better option. Then the interviewer asked a Spring Boot lifecycle question. What happens when you start a Spring Boot application internally? So in this question, basically they want to understand that whenever you start a Spring Boot application, what happens internally? What happens behind the scene? So there is a step by step flow which happens behind the scene. Whenever you run the Spring Boot application, there you have a main class. That main class runs the Spring Boot application and it starts auto configuration and component scan. It creates the application context as well and it initializes all the beans. So basically application context initializes all the beans. Then it starts the embedded server. Usually we have Tomcat. Of course we can have other server as well we can explicitly add them so if we have a other server it will start that server maybe jetty so finally it exposes all rest endpoints and the application became ready so most of the setup happens automatically behind the scenes then there was a multi-threading question which is what is the difference between a process and a thread so this is a very basic thread question if i talk about the process process is an independent program with its own memory where a thread is a smaller unit inside a process. Threads usually share memories, so that's why communication is faster between threads. But shared memory also increases the chances of conflict, and that is why processes are heavy. Processes are heavy compared to threads. Threads are very lightweight, and if you are using multi threading in your project, it improves your performance, but it should be must handled very carefully. Next, the interviewer moved to microservices question. The question was, how does service discovery work in a microservices system? Now to answer this, you can say that service discovery helps services find each other without hard coding URL. We use tools like Eureka, Console or AWS Cloud Map for this purpose. So each service registered itself with the service discovery server. And when one service needs another service, it asks the registry for the active instance of that service. Load balancing can also happen through the discovery layer. This makes the system more dynamic and scalable. So between Eureka console and AWS cloud map, you can mention that one of them 
you were using in your project and explain them that in thoroughly here i also have a simple diagram which is having a client and api gateway and service a b c and there is eureka discovery server so whenever your client is calling any service that request through the api gateway it will go to the eureka server and eureka server finds the suitable service to call then the interviewer move to a coding based java question which is how do you handle null values safely in java without using too many if condition so basically it is not a coding based question it is a question based on optional class so because without using if condition or many if condition you can use optional class and avoid null pointer exception and handle the null value safely so while answering this question you can say that in java 8 and above we use optional to avoid null pointer exceptions optional helps wrap a value that can be null we can use or else or else get or is present methods to handle it safely it removes nested null checks in the code and it makes the code cleaner and easier to maintain we use mostly for the method return types here on the screen i have an example of using optional in this example we have created an object of optional which is holding a string value and the thing is this optional object will work like a container i mean it can have null as well so by using or else method in the next line we can define that if there is null value we will pass the default instead of the actual value or instead of the null next the interviewer asked a practical cloud integration question and this question is just to understand the experience level of the candidate like is he really worked that many years because a experienced guy can tell easily that how he managed the secrets and how the configuration works internally so the question was how do you store configuration value secretly in a cloud environment now generally when you are using databases or any any configuration you have the configuration things in the application properties or application yaml file but this is not secure so that's why you put those values in a secured and secret place the place can be a secret manager or a vault so to answer this question you can say that we never store secrets inside the code or in the git or on aws we use secret managers or ssm parameter store spring boot reads these values during the runtime using the environment variables this keep password keys token or any secret values fully encrypted and only specific roles can access them so if you are familiar with the aws there are multiple roles like app roles or any other role admin role uh, and based on the roles any specific application you can give a specific role and that based on that role application have special privilege or special access so that's why this method is very safe and more scalable then storing the values in the property file then we got a docker question so basically this interview is more about advanced java and advanced deployment feature it is more like a devops role so that's why they are asking multiple configuration related or deployment related question so the question was what is the difference between docker image and docker container if i talk about docker image first docker image is a blueprint it contains the code jvm libraries and dependencies while a container is a running instance of the image an image can create multiple containers one image can create multiple containers images are stored in the registries containers runs on the host while images are read only containers have writable layer so basically the thing is you have a docker image and you run that image on a container then the interior move to a microservice reliability question what is circuit breaker in microservices and why do we use it so why we use circuit breaker circuit breaker is something which helps prevent cascading failure now what is cascading failure cascading failures means one application is failing and because of that another application is failing and because of that another application failing so that is cascading failure if one service is slow or down the circuit opens and stop calls to that service and this avoids overloading the failing application and protect the overall system tools like resilience 4j or hystrix are commonly used for this purpose so basically circuit breaker improves stability and user experience during failure so that is why it is very important to use circuit breaker design pattern while developing a microservice next the interviewer went back to java basics the question was what is the difference between hash map and concurrent hash map now this is a very now this is a very simple question you can answer it like this hash map is not thread safe while i talk if i talk about concurrent hash map it, th it is thread safe and that is why it is designed for concurrency 
हैशमेप यूजेज अ सिंगल ऑब्जेक्ट लेवल लॉक इफ यू मेक इट सिंक्रोनाइज कॉन्करेंट हैशमेप इन द ऑन द अदर हैंड यूज इज सेगमेंटेड लॉकिंग सो मल्टीपल थ्रेड कैन एक्सेस इट इफिशियंटली इन मल्टी थ्रेडेड सिस्टम वी ऑलवेज प्रिफर कॉन्करेंट हैशमेप then again there was a cloud networking question what is the difference between a public subnet and private subnet in aws again if you are not familiar with aws you can skip this question if you are familiar with aws and mentioning aws in your resume this question is also very important for you now to answer this question you can say that a public subnet has a route to the internet through the internet gateway instance instances inside can be accessed from the internet a private subnet on the other end has no direct internet routes it used for databases internal services and backend systems private subnets usually access the internet through a nat gateway and guys quick reminder if you faced any interviews recently you can share your questions with us you can fill the form available in the description and if you want to join the mock interview session i will start that soon as well and provide a form for that in each of every video in the description box then the interviewer now move to a practical real world scenario question how do you handle versioning in rest apis the thing is we never change an existing api response directly instead we create version endpoints like version 1 version 2 version 3 This keeps backward compatibility for older clients. Suppose you want to add another feature, you can have a different version for it, without hindering the uh, older version. And that is why versioning helps us to release a new feature without breaking the old consumers. So, for example, you can have multiple versions. You, whenever you get a new feature, you can create a new version for it. In the older version, you have a working code. So, suppose version two is getting failure. So, if you are having multiple versions, in that case, what happens? If one version fails, there is another version for the consumers. Then the interviewer asked one more important question, which was, "What is the difference between solid principle and design pattern?" Now, you learn solid principle, you learn design patterns. Are the solid principles are also design pattern? The thing is, they are different. If I talk about solid principle it is a set of principle for writing maintainable code design pattern on the other hand are reusable solution to common problems solid principle tells us how to structure classes while design pattern tells us how to solve specific problem like object creation or behavior change now both helps improve code quality but in a very different way next the interviewer picked the kubernetes question what is kubernetes deployment and why do we use it now this is a optional question for you if you don't have kubernetes experience or if you are not mentioning kubernetes in your resume you can skip this otherwise you can uh, listen to this answer and if i need to answer i will say that a kubernetes deployment manages the replica sets and manages the number of uh, how many ports are running it also supports rolling updates without downtime it gives you version control for port templates and it is the safest way to manage updates and scaling now uh, there was a very basic uh, java question which is what is the difference between stack memory and heap memory of course many of you can answer this in many of my video you can see this question because this is asked multiple time in many of the companies you can answer this question something like this a uh, stack memory stores method call and local variable while heap memory stores object and instance data stack is faster and managed automatically while heap is slower but it is used for dynamic memory garbage collection in jvm cleans the unused object in the heap memory stack memory gets cleared when the method ends next the interviewer asked about logging how do you handle centralized logging in your microservices system now, the interview questions in this interview were very good uh, they have covered everything from core java to java 8 to microservices to deployment and most question were from deployment and production issue now how you are managing uh, Uh, logging in your microservice to answer this question you can say that each microservice writes logs to a centralized system there are multiple centralized system you can give example of like there is cloudwatch there is splunk there is elk stack so whatever you are familiar with you can give that example then these logs are collected stored and searchable in one place which is our centralized system which can be a cloudwatch or splunk or elk or anything This helps debug distributed issues is very easily because each request will have a correlation ID which will help us to track the request across multiple microservices. If you are using Splunk, then you can filter out the request by the instance or or by the instance number or the logs or by the correlation ID. So it's very easy. Finally, interview ended with a 
again a cloud deployment question which was what is a blue green deployment in cloud environments now to answer this you can say that blue green deployment uses two environments blue and green of course uh, blue runs the current version green runs the newer version we switch traffic to green only after it is fully tested if anything fail we roll back instantly to blue it gives zero downtime deployment if you are reached till here thank you so much and this is all from this interview i hope these questions will be very helpful for you if you are applying as a cloud engineer or as a backend java developer with devops option as well if you like this video make sure to hit subscribe and share it with your friends as well and don't forget if you have any interview questions or faced any interview recently please share your questions with us i will see you in the next video thank you so much